Today we are going to be doing my one year review of the Flare 58 and we're also going to go over why I decided to sell it and why I decided to go away from Flair. But before we do that, I just want to say welcome to Kabeen's Coffee Corner. This channel is designed to help you choose the coffee gear you want to brew with at home. You'll find a lot of reviews and comparisons on this channel. If you could do me a favor and please like and subscribe, that helps me push out more content and helps me grow as a YouTube channel. Also, if you're looking at purchasing this, please use the link in the description below. We'll all make a small amount of commission at no extra charge to you. Also, please follow me on my Instagram account. It's at Kabeen's Coffee Corner. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So I purchased the Flare on pre-order back last summer in summer of 2021 so i've received it and i've used it for a little over 13 months now so this is a little longer than a one year review um they've made some quite slight tweaks from the original version and upgrades and i took part in all that stuff so this is pretty much exactly what it is like today um and i'm actually going to get rid of it and i've already got it sold and it's getting picked up in um just a couple days um so this is like one of my last times using the flare and my last time reviewing the flare. I think there might be one more video that I'm going to pre-record uh, before I, I let it go. Uh, but first off, this machine is $580 and this is the flagship of the flare espresso line. As many of you probably know, if you've tuned into my channel before, I've always been a great fan of the Flare. Flare started my coffee journey um, in espresso. This was one of the first machines I got was back when the Flare Classic didn't even have a pressure gauge and a bottomless portafilter wasn't even an option for any of the Flares. I then got the bottomless portafilter. I added the pressure gauge. I then switched over and I got the Flare Pro 1 and then I upgraded that to the Flare Pro 2 and then I got the pieces to try out the Neo and test that and I've used that and then as soon as this came out I was the one of the first people to purchase it and get it and receive it um, and I'm very very grateful for the times that I've spent with Flare and the times that I've used it. With all of the stuff that I've used it I've compared it with a Breville Duo Boiler, a Flare Pro, Rocket Apartamento, the El Rocio Zar which is a $4,000 machine and I really do feel like some of the best shots I've ever had came from this machine. So I want to go over a few features of it and kind of explain how it works, what it all comes with. Um, it comes with this little rubber drip tray. Um, and what you basically do is you grind uh, coffee beans, put it in the porta filter, and then you'll tamp with the flare tamper um, that comes with it. And I really do love this tamper. It's a great little tamper. Um, as soon as you're done with that, you're going to put the flare 58 puck screen on it. Um, then you're going to lock it in just like that. And you're going to lift up the handle just a little bit. And this is going to pull up the stem of the pressure gauge. And when that, this little stem gets pulled up, it allows water to pass through. So you're going to lift this up just a tad, fill up the water all the way up to the top. And then you're going to pull the handle all the way up and pull down for the amount of pressure that you want and for the yield that you come out. And then when you're done with that, you're going to pull up the handle again and purge out the rest of the water into a new cup. One of the things that I think makes Flare an incredible company and a an incredible machine, especially for those who are starting out, is the fact that they're relatively cheap because they're relatively cheap because they're all manual and there's no electrical components outside of this one. And it has the ability to allow you to control pressure. So in other words, what that means is I can put coffee in and I can brew at two bars of pressure, allowing um, the coffee grounds to be fully saturated. And I can do that for as little, as little and as much time as I want. Then I could slowly ramp up to six bars, seven, eight, nine, whatever my desire is, slowly ramp back and adjust that in every how, way I want to. So this is a machine that you can really, really grow with and really in a lot of terms doesn't mean you ever really need to upgrade it. This one is particularly special because this was the first one that included a heating element. You click this button three times and you can change the settings between low, medium, and high and adjust how you want the how much heat you want this to heat up with. Um, but that does come the expense of having this massive, um, looks like an Xbox 360 power brick that you have to plug into the wall and then this plugs into this portion of it. And then you have to click the button in order to heat it up and it takes about 10 minutes to get fully heated is what they recommend. Um, I added this feature on here which is a switch bot which allows me to basically remotely press this button automatically from uh, wherever I'm at in my house. 
uh, as long as I'm in Bluetooth range of it. It also comes with this piece of rubber that basically goes underneath of the brew head so you could preheat the brew head with water if you didn't want to use the electrical components for some wells. So I've pulled great shots with it. I love this machine because you can control all the pressure and all the variables of it, which honestly I never had. The only machine that I've ever used that allows you to fully control pressure came at the expense of a $4,000 machine, which is the El Rose Yozar from Prima Coffee. Um, and that's what I think is about incredible with this because you can always be exploring, you can always be learning things, and anytime somebody puts something out with a descent, you can usually recreate it with the flare. And that's one of the things that excites me. So a lot of you guys are probably watching, if I love the flare so much, you're probably asking, why, why did I sell it? Why did I let it go? One reason of it is because the workflow on a, other machines are just a little better. Um, not extraordinary, like you can bump out back-to-back -back shots uh, pretty quickly, but you still have to fill the water and you have to purge every single time, which isn't something that you have to do as much um, as like with a normal machine uh, that has a boiler and things like that in it. Um, that does come at the expense of this one also has very little things that can break on it. Um, I haven't had to get a single replacement part um, for this machine in the 13 months that I have it. While I'm gonna have to worry about cleaning and descaling any other machine that I would get, um, and who knows what else could go wrong on the f hundreds and hundreds of parts that are on the inside and all the wires and all that stuff. So there's there's less that can go wrong with it, which makes it really appealing and it's super budget friendly. At five hundred and eighty dollars, might seem like a lot, but this really does produce sh shots that are as great as four thousand dollar machines out there. Um, so I am getting rid of this because the workflow is just a little bit better when you have multiple people and uh, for milk drinks. So for this YouTube channel, I've had the, the privilege to grow um, and have the opportunity to get more gear and test more things. And one of those things is grinders. Uh, currently right now, I have three different electric grinders that are sitting on my counter that I've been testing and trying out and doing reviews for. And it's just much easier to pull back-to-back -back shots if I'm using something uh, else that has a boiler in it. So I switched from this machine to the Breville dual boiler. You're going to hear a lot more about that machine. You've seen it in a few videos already, but I did this thing called the Slayer mod to it, which basically allows me to do flow control from it. So while it's not pressure profiling like this, it still gives me the ability to adjust my coffee and explore different things. And that is why I went that direction. Um, and the only reason I'm selling this is because it's simply not being used near as much and I don't have room on my coffee bar to store too different espresso machines for the long term. So this was sitting in a closet and I thought it could go to a lot better use if I let it go. So I ended up selling this thing shortly after I posted it to um, one of my favorite baristas that I've ever had who uh, moved over to a different city a few years ago and he's just back in town for this week and he's taking this home with him and I'm excited for him um, in that journey of it. Um, but this is really I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Flare. I'm always going to be a huge fan of Flare. Because of them, I'm able to be here where I'm at now. If I didn't start and have that budget option at $150 to get a machine that I could actually continue to grow within my espresso journey, and I look back at that first machine that I got for Flare, and if I still had that machine, I would still be pulling great shots with it. And that's one of the things that I love about Flare is it's it takes a lot of work to grow out of it. and in a lot of ways, I didn't grow out of it. I just wanted something a little bit more convenient. So I kind of want to end this video with a few things that I loved to match with my flair. Um, one of the things that I love the aesthetic wood. Um, so I got in a coffee bar, a coffee cart that has the same wooden accents and a matte black accent. And then I did um, something fun. I have the niche zero here. And I love this because I actually vinyl wrapped this Niche Zero. It might be a little bit hard to tell on camera, but this Niche Zero is flat black and not glossy black, which I'm super, super excited about um, because it matches now the wood and um, the flat, the matte black on this. Uh, the next thing I did was I added the wooden handle uh, to my Stag EKG. So now it also matches the flare. And then I also picked up, which you'll see a review on soon, it's all either on my channel or will be coming soon. I picked up this knockbox by Simonelli, Simonelli, Sim, Sim, Simon Nomo. I don't know. The link's in the description. Uh, essentials. And this has a nice little uh, portafilter holder. So you simply put your portafilter in, funnel to help the grounds through. 
of course, tamper. And then the nice part about it is if you want to keep things super clean, you can lift this top part up and you have a cork um, and a little knock box to store your coffee grounds into it. And it just was a really cool looking thing and a cool setup on here. So you're gonna see one workflow on my channel of this and I'm gonna use all of this gear um, so you can kind of see how that looks like and see how I would use the flare. But flare, I know you're gonna watch this and I just wanna say I'm, I'm really am thankful for you. Even though we're parting ways for now, I'm sure whatever products you guys release, I'll probably purchase as I've purchased almost all of them except for the hand grinder because I didn't want another hand grinder. But you guys have done a great, great job and Flare was a company that it would take a lot for me not to continue to support Flare in any way. Um, that was my, my first giveaway as a channel. I gave away a Flare Pro 2. Um, but Flare is by far one of the best companies to go to. Um, for most people, it's really no need to really get anything nicer than a $580 machine that is the Flare 58. If you're into milk steaming, you might want to look a little elsewhere, but the Bellman stovetop steamer and a lot of other ways that you can steam milk. And I, I heard that potentially that Flare is working on a steamer. So if that happens, it'll be reviewed here and it'll be compared to the Bellman. And hopefully that'll solve some issues here uh, for a lot of people. You can pull a lot of shots back to back. I've done it quite a bit with it, but the Breville dual boiler just worked a little bit better for my workflow. Um, so that was the reason for the change and it was not an easy one, um, but I'm excited for the future and I'm thankful for the growth of this channel to allow me to continue to purchase gear and do reviews. And um, I'm very grateful of the flare and I still think it's one of the best machines out there. If you have any questions on this, please let me know, uh, drop them in the comments and I would love to answer those for you. And as for now, thank you so much for watching and supporting me as a YouTuber.